All right, so uh, a couple of notes from the SmackDown Rampage show. So they have been teasing an inter- uh, or unification match between uh, Randy Orton and Riddle and the Usos. And so they do the contract signing, and of course the contract signing breaks down into a brawl. And then Roman Reigns comes out, and he's helping the Usos beat him up three on two. And then Drew McIntyre's music hits, and he comes down and runs everybody off. And they do an angle backstage where Paul Heyman confronts Adam Pearce, and he says, you know, Roman's not happy about this, and uh, we've got an idea for the pay-per-view, and that is a six-man. And Adam Pearce goes, I don't know if you know this or not, but I can't just change the match. We've been promoting it for weeks. And so uh, Paul does his promo and basically tells him, you're going to... You're going to change the match. And then later in the show, it in fact is announced it is now a six-man at the pay-per-view. And uh, we have two more shows for them to explain what's going on. So, so are, there, are, are, are all the belts at stake? That's the rumor, but they did not announce that. So uh, they would need to announce that on Raw or SmackDown. And even then, I don't even know how it would work. Because what if Drew McIntyre pins Jey Uso? Drew's... Drew's the single champion, and Riddle and, and uh, um, Orton are the tag team I see. So fight. if he would get I, the I don't win, know. I'm all just, of I'm, the baby faces would get all of the belts? I don't know. Maybe it's just you have to pin whoever... Maybe whoever gets pinned loses their belt if you pin a champion. Well, yeah, but that's my point. Like, if Drew pins Jey Uso, he loses his belt to who? Drew? In theory. I think it would have to be that the winning team know. ends up with all of the belts in order to make it work. I guess. I guess they'll explain that on Raw. But the um so the the or, or maybe SmackDown. But the 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 deal is is um obviously, you know, because we you know Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre, even though they're working at the house shows every night, from a pay per view standpoint, um they want to I guess they want to save that for the bigger shows. Um, which would be, I mean, they got, um, uh, Chicago coming up indoors at the Rosemont, you know, um, all state arena. And then, uh, then they've got the two stadium shows on July 2nd and July 30th that need something big and they don't have that big match. And I guess Roman, you know, for Roman's the biggest star and, um, his biggest opponent right now is, is Drew. So they're saving that uh, for a, quote, bigger show than this one, because this one is whatever. You know, it's still a pay-per-view and all that. But, uh, yeah, it's weird because it's like, we're, in theory, do we do we still have a unification match? But, like, don't you think, like, the unification match just, it's, it, it kind of sucks to have a unification match that's not even a tag team match, I think. It certainly is. Yep. So I guess we'll have to have that explained on, on Raw or SmackDown. But as of now, it is just announced as a six-man match. We had Drew beating Sammy in the cage match, which was, in fact, escape the cage rules. They did three countouts to build to a match where you had to run away to win. That was the stipulation. And uh, Drew did pin him. He did not. So he didn't. So he, so he didn't. He didn't run away to win. And well, Sammy he didn't. didn't but Sammy spent the entire match trying to flee. Okay. Did he? Did he flee? He tried, but he finally got caught and claymored and pinned. Yeah. But well, uh, then that's the. That's kind of like the. Uh, you know what I mean? That tells. That's like the completion of the story. In theory, you know, if you put him in the cage, he should try to run away and be unable to run away and then get beat. That that should be with. Well, sure, but that would that would that would be like you know you put a roof on the cage. So in fact, he can't run away. Or or instead, yeah. he was rewarded with a match where he could run away, which is why he was in the match in the first place. Well, in theory, in the cage, you're not supposed to be able to run away. I mean, that's what the cage is there for. Well, yeah, but when you have escape the cage rules, that's the rule is you are supposed to run away. Yeah, which I know. he did. I, I know escape the cage rules are kind of, but you know what? It's like here's the deal is is that we've, you know, there's there's things in wrestling that make absolutely no sense, but when you're brought up with it and you've watched it for twenty years, it just becomes accepted, you know. And um, and that those cage rules, like to me, you know, I was a kid watching cage matches and they never, 
Well, I don't say they never had these rules, they, but where we lived, they never had the rules. I mean, it was in, in in Los Angeles and in New York, they did absolutely have the climb out of the cage to win, but it was not ever running away. The idea was, you know, with uh, the Blasty cage and the Bruno cage matches is that the baby face just beat the hell out of the heel. He's laying there and you just... You know, with Bruno, he just, like, walks out the door triumphantly. The other guy's dead. With Blassie, he would climb up and over the cage, leaving the other guy there. It wasn't one of those things where, you know, you run away and try to win. I mean, it wasn't that. Um, but by usage of those rules, in fact, to make sense, you can run away to win. And, you know, yeah. And now it's just accepted. Like, cage matches, you run away, you get out of the cage, you know, there's guys interfere, and it's kind of like, all right, whatever. You know, it's it's kind of, I don't want to say ridiculous because it's acceptable, but it's, it's, it's ridiculous as compared to what the original cage philosophy was all about. We had Rick Shea beating Shanky in about uh, three minutes with a cradle. And uh, Shanky looked fine in this match. I mean, he he looked intimidating, and he worked like a giant for once, and he actually did a pretty good job. And then afterwards, Jinder yells at Shanky, and Shanky says, No! And he storms off, so it appears they may be breaking up. That's all we need. Well, you know, it just depends on what they do. If they, You know what I mean? It's like if they break up and then do nothing, then it means nothing, but... If it's the impetus to do something with somebody, then, you know, they hadn't been doing anything with those guys anyway, so we'll see. We had Raquel's debut against Cat Cardoza, and uh, it was two minutes, and they actually gave Cat Cardoza about 30 seconds of heat. And then uh, Raquel hit her chokeslam powerbomb and pinned her. This is another one where clearly they've told her to smile, because, man, she's just out there smiling. She's so happy. She's a, ba- she's a baby face. She's happy. She has to smile. Yeah. We had Naomi beating Shayna Baszler uh, with another roll-up. And then Natty attacked Naomi. Sasha made the save. So we're going to be getting a... Uh, oh, and then Baszler stomped on Naomi's elbow. So we got a tag match coming up there for the titles, obviously. Yeah. Butch is uh, missing... After he ran off last week, he has not been found. So we had Xavier he Woods. Was, he was, uh, I, I think they found him in, in England. Well, he certainly wasn't here. I can tell yeah. you that much. Xavier uh, beat Ridge Holland with the small package. And then Seamus starts yelling at uh, Ridge Holland afterwards. And he says, ah, I'm going to show you how to do it. And he challenges Kofi to a match. And in fact, he shows him how to do it. He uh, broke kick Kofi clean in the middle in three minutes. And uh, pinned him. So, Mm. that was that. Lacey Evans' story, uh, part four. Uh, It's pretty much the same stuff that she'd been uh, talking about earlier. This was more about her military career and uh, graduating and her father not being there. And um, it was good. And then they did the Beat the Clock Challenge. And they literally did it exactly the opposite of how I thought they were going to do it. Which was, Ronda went first... And uh, she beat Shotzi in a minute 41. And then Charlotte goes second. And like an idiot, she's stalling and blah, blah, blah with Aaliyah. And then she finally puts her in the uh, figure four. She's going for the figure eight. But Aaliyah is able to hold on. And the time limit expires. And so Ronda wins the beat the clock challenge because Charlotte could not submit her opponent. in. What does she get for winning? Nothing. Okay. Literally nothing. You just beat the clock. Okay. And then, uh, of course, uh, Charlotte beat up Drew Gulak because this week Drew Gulak wants to be the timekeeper. So he's trying out to be the new timekeeper. So uh, she was really mad at him. Anyway, I thought the easiest thing possible was Charlotte goes first. She wins relatively quickly. And then Ronda just goes in there and mutilates somebody in like nine seconds for the submission. But they did the opposite. That probably would be better. It would be far more more effective. You you know why they probably didn't do it? Because Charlotte's losing the pay per view, and she no prob no probably because um they they want to go ah people will think we're going to do this so we're going to do the opposite so we're going to do what's worse 
<laughs> we're going to do the worst. I think you're giving him too much credit for knowing the right way to do this, to be quite frank. Well, they, I mean, it is obvious that you should put the uh, baby face second, having to beat the time. That's like just the logical way you would do this. Well, or, yeah, but it's also Ronda Rousey's whole gimmick in UFC was arm barring people with it, like in moments. Do, do you think that they remember that, and bro? How could you not know that if you know anything about Ronda Rousey? Do you think that they remember that? God. I mean, Ronda Rousey probably remembers it, but you know. I should hope so. Well, I mean, I'm sure. Obviously, she knows, but they they didn't book it that way. They sure didn't. You know, I mean. Quite frankly, she should have just gone in there and, and won in like 30 seconds, especially since, you know, the whole deal is is the, you know, the I quit match and, uh, you know, um, for the championship and, and all that. So, uh, whatever. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.